For criminal media's policy, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his latest column titled Assessing and Engaging with the GNU After 100 Days, Prospects for Democratic Resurgence, Part 3. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. Your last article relates a lot to popular forces and mass action, and you say that it is not new that some of the leaderships do not favor mass action. And also you say it goes back to the 1990s. Please elaborate on this. You see, some of us came from the UDF experience, and we were used to taking to the streets, trying to use our power on the ground to influence what was happening. So we thought that even if the ANC became the leading political force or became government, the popular forces, that is the masses on the ground through their organization, would not be disbanded and they would continue to play a role in the future. Now it became clear that some people had different ideas. Mandela would sometimes say, leaders have to lead. In other words, you don't look back every five minutes, ask yourself what your followers say. You don't go back to Queenstown or wherever you come from and ask the people of Queenstown, what do they think? And there was a tendency where people found it irritating to have their own supporters coming to the streets raising demands without a man, without the leadership saying, okay. Now, our view, those of us who came from that background, but also people like Chris Hani, who had been in exile, was that the street is a place of power. If the government uses the power of force, we will use our mass popular force in the, on the ground to show them the meaning of what we were putting across. If they didn't understand us, speaking in English to them, or is it called, called or in one of these languages, uh, we would show them on the streets how to understand. And Raymond, one of the reasons you argue for lack of mass activities, you say that there is insufficient focus on organization as opposed to mobilization. This you say it relates to also the lack of debate that would have given people a better understanding of why they needed to act together. Well, you see, you've got a problem at the moment that there's very little debate. And the ANC, the strongest organ political organization in numbers in the country, for some time now, has not had debate. Now, in the period before 1994, we had a lot of political education. We were used to, when new members came in, they would be inducted into the values and ways of operating of the ANC. One of the things was political education was itself a form of organization, preparing people for how they would deal with the issues they encountered. And mobilization is a very is not a very different, but it's a different thing. You can mobilize people to go and burn down a shop or loot people in uh, who, who inspires the shops and things like that. Or you can um, mobilize people to attack a police station. But what happens the next day? Are they part of some organization where you can call these 100 people together to do something else, to do something like go and look at the homeless, see how you can help them. Next day, go and look at old people. Where, how are they being treated? What sort of preparation is there to get water for them when there's a water outage? So organization is a more sustained thing than mobilization. Mobilization can have different people each time and can happen once a year, twice a year, once a week, anything like that. Organization, people will be meeting, discussing, planning, all these things. Now, all of those concepts are part of organization. Uh, a lot of what happens in mobilization is spontaneous. 
And finally, Raymond, you are critical of the SACP and Kosacho's attack on the GNU, and you chide them, especially with how Lenin would have related to something like the GNU. So is this not a little far-fetched to relate Lenin to the GNU? Either they thought I'm too far gone um, uh, to reply to me, or that I, you know, I'm a lost case. But the truth of the matter is that Lenin would never have just spat on um, the GNU, said it's neoliberal and this, that, and the other, as if that's the end, to give it a label. What Len Lenin wrote this uh, booklet, which I refer to, called Left-Wing Communism and Infantile Disorder. He said it was an infantile disorder to say that the people in the 19th century would have nothing to do, or early 20th, would have nothing to do with what they called bourgeois parliaments, parliaments uh, in a state that was capitalist. He argued that the communists, and it would also go for the unionists as well, politicized ones like Kosata used to be, uh, they would never have abandoned a place where they could advance their cause. And what does I mean by that is you can't just abandon the GNU to the ANC and DA politicians and these other people from who knows where. You can't just abandon it. You go there and you, you, you from outside, let's say, you don't go there necessarily. From outside, you push for the statement of intent, its liberatory content to be realized, to have a national dialogue, which is a truly national dialogue, or truly national and truly a dialogue. You make the goals of the uh, GNU realized in as progressive a way as possible. That is what Lenin would have done. That is what Walter Sassoon and Nelson Mandela would have done. Thanks a lot, Raymond. Thank you very much. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about assessing and engaging with the GNU after 100 days. Prospects for Democratic Resurgence, Part 3.